Hello, everyone. We're here today to talk about our book with Labor Press, Elizabeth Bishop and the Literary Archive, which came out at the beginning of this year. Here with me to talk about the book are some of the contributors, Richard Flynn, Elise Knorr, Yal Schlick, Heather Tressler, and John Emil Vincent. But before we do that, I'll say a few words about the book and what, a, what brought us together. Elizabeth Bishop and the Literary Archive features 15 new essays that for the first time take Bishop's archive not only as a source for what we know about the poet and her times, but also as a subject. We know, for instance, that Bishop, despite her extensive travels and rather chaotic life, managed to save an enormous amount of material, and she even created her own card catalog for that material. The bulk of the archive is at Vassar College in more than 120 boxes filled with some 3,500 pages of drafts of poems, stories, essays, incredible collage-like notebooks, postcards, letters from other major poets and writers of the 20th century across the globe, thousands of books and more. And her papers can be found in other archives in the United States and Canada and Brazil. I've been writing about Bishop for many years, but I felt that although Bishop's archive has been used extensively in scholarship, including my own, that we hadn't really discussed the archive as an institutional space that has shaped our reading of the poet. Bishop's archive is a great case study, in fact, to think about questions about copyright, literary estates, and teaching and scholarship in the digital humanities. Bishop's archive keeps growing as well with new and significant acquisitions of materials that have really moved Bishop's scholarship into new areas. For instance, the first section of our book takes up questions in and around the queer archive to provide a more in-depth understanding of Bishop as a queer poet in light of new documents coming into the archive but also looking again at the whole of the archive in terms of our growing understanding of Bishop, her life and career self-fashioning. Bishop was a, both a curator of her own work and also a poet whose very poetic practice was curatorial. So in order to begin to fill that gap in Bishop studies a few years ago, I proposed a National Endowment of the Humanities Summer Seminar for college and university professors that would take place at Vassar College in the archives for three weeks. That proposal was successful, and that's where we all met in June of 2017. This book is very much a collaborative project, the culmination of our conversations and scholarship in and around the Bishop archives. I think the book really reflects the incredible ferment of those three weeks for us. That total immersion in the archives, 